Shalom, 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 all right, I greet you in the mighty name of the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, to him belong the glory, the dominion, and the power. Right, we give thanks to the Most High for having us come before you again. All right, through his spirit to edify, right, to strengthen our people, Israel, Heavenly Father, you know, especially in this time. I pray that you're staying faithful, you're growing, you're working on yourself, you're fasting, and you've been diligent in the truth, right? Burning with zeal, right? Don't allowing the things of the world to destabilize you, right? But you're continuously being built up on the Messiah, right? I greet you all in the mighty name of the Most High, right? Today, I have my son, Micah, who is going to assist me in reading, all right? So we praise the Most High for that. But before we go any further, I invite you all to join us in, in prayer, right? As we seek the face of our Heavenly Father. Sisters, cover your head. Brothers, uncover your head. O God and the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, our God and our King, our Healer, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are, for your mercy. We thank you that you are the Most High God, the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all things seen and unseen. To you alone belong praise, to you alone belong honor, and we will not give your praise to another. We magnify thy name, Father, for your ways are excellent and past finding out. You are the Most High God, our Healer, our Restorer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us, for healing us from day to day. We thank you for the word of truth that you've allowed us to see. Father, we pray that you'll continue to be with our spirits. Help us day by day, Father, to overcome the things in this world. Father, and to discipline our flesh upon this earth, Heavenly Father. Please be with our spirits, Heavenly Father, in time of great loneliness, of distress, and cause us to triumph, Heavenly Father, over those circumstances. As your son triumphed, as he laid down his life, as he suffered, help us, Heavenly Father, to take up our cross and follow you day by day. Let this word, the gospel, have free course in the four corners of the earth, waking up your sons and your daughter, Father, bringing them back into the knowledge, the path of light, the path of truth for thy name's sake. And we are praying, Heavenly Father, that you would please allow what we're going through today, Father, to be edifying. Father, we pray that you alone will get the glory and the praise. These mercies we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Our family, so again, we greet you, man. Um, it's been a blessing. All right, so far, just, you know, be before you as the Lord. Give us utterance, right, to edify, to strengthen, right? We pray that you are studying, you know, you're applying yourself. As the scripture says, we shouldn't be what? We shouldn't be hearers of the word only, but doers of the word. So every day we have to work on ourselves. We have to turn the finger inwards, right? And face the man in the mirror, right? And fix what we see. So we pray that the Most High continue to be merciful to us, right? Especially in these last days, right? We can see so many things, you know, kicking off in the earth. And these things must come to pass. So don't get troubled. You know what I mean? Don't get, don't let your faith be shipwrecked, right? But continue to be steadfast, continue to be zealous. Pray for, pray for zeal, right? To finish this race, the Messiah finished his race, right? He did all what the Father allowed him and, and allotted to him to do. So it is we have to pray that we fulfill our task, all right? So we give the Most High praise for this. Today, through the Spirit and power of the Most High, we go in into a topic, right, to, you know, to fix the ills within us and our people, our nation, right? And the topic and the title is, The Nations Need Israelites in Sin. That is, the nations need Israelites in sin, right? Now, when we talk about an Israelite, to many, it's like a foreign term, foreign concept, a strange word. For many hearing about the Israelites, they think it's a religion. They will ask, what religion are you? What church do you go to? What denomination do you belong to? But brothers and sisters, being an Israelite is not a religion. It's not the same as a man would say they're, they're uh, Muslim or Christians or Hinduists or Buddhist. Being an Israelite is not a religion. Being an Israelite, it, right? As you see on my screen, John 1, 47, it, the last three at the end, denotes a people a descendant of the man Israel, whose name was what? Jacob. Jacob, Yaikwab, right? Jacob, whose name was changed to what? 
to Israel or Yasha Allah, the prince of the power, the rulers God set up on this earth. Right? So it's not a religion. It's your blood. It's your heritage. We descend from the man Jacob, who was called, whose name was changed to Israel. So we are the Israelites. Like you have the people of Moab. They are the Moabites. They descend from the man Moab. The Edomites, Ites, the people that descend from Edom. Esau. Right? So we are the Israelites. It's not a religion. Because there are many people who confuse it. And many people would, would try to put the Israelites in a religious box or a religious context, but you can't. We have no affiliation to any religion on this earth. Religion is what the world gives. Christianity, the modern day Christianity, that is the lawless Christianity. The Christianity that says, do what you wilt. Believe what you want. Laws are nailed to the tree. That's the religion, the chief, the chief religion in the earth. Right? The Christianity that's found in the Bible is a Christianity with laws. The Israelites were first called, was, was first called Christians in Antioch. That's Acts chapter 11 and verse 26. Read it in your time. So the Christians, the Israelites, were called Christians because a Christian is a follower of the Messiah. A Christian is one who keeps the laws, statutes, and commandments. The disciples were following law, following Torah. That's the original Christian. But the Christianity that's in the world is a counterfeit, an imitation, a knockoff. A Christianity that don't deal with laws. A Christianity that don't follow commandments. We don't follow that. We're not a part of religion. We're not Muslims. Many would say the Israelite men have facial hair. They grow their beards. So they will think, you're a Muslim. We're not Muslim. We don't deal with Islam. Right? Men grow their beards and their facial hair because it is in the law. And we'll break that down in future lessons. We can't break the law. That is sin. So the least commandments, the least law we have to keep right? That is what it is. When our sisters covered their heads, right? That modesty, our sisters not dressing immoral, immodestly, right? But they're more so showing the inward, the meek and quiet spirit rather than the outward. So we are not religion. This is blood. We are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of the prophets, the children of the apostles, right? We are the blood of Christ. We are the blood of Moses. We are the blood of Jeremiah. We are the blood of Daniel. We are the blood of Noah, the righteous patriarchs, right? It is us, we that have been scattered throughout the earth, the four corners of the earth, suffering the curses written off Predominantly in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, the blessing and the curses. We've been given the laws, right, as a light bearer to keep, to teach. But we failed at our duty. But through the spirit and power of the Most High, in these last days, guess what? We have gotten up from our filth. Right? We've returned back to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. And we're keeping the commandments of God because keeping them is life. To not keep them is captivity. To not keep the law is death. To not keep the law is alienation from the Almighty. Right? It's the sword. So we're going into the lesson and topic. The nations need Israelites in sin. They want us to remain in a squalid condition, a filthy condition. They want us to continue to break the laws of God so they can triumph over us. But guess what? We're going to change all of this through the spirit and power of the Most High. Right? And we're going to teach our people a right so you can get up from the mess. Because we're not swines. We're not going to deny to live in the mess. We're not dogs to the vomit. The nations are called dogs in the Bible. 
right? Get, get comfortable. Those of you joining in to listen, we've said in previous, I'm not here to entertain or to tickle anyone's emotion. I'm here to speak truth. Right? We're not a part of the hashtag political correctness movement. Hashtag bribe my tongue movement. Right? I'm a servant of the almighty. I speak what God speaks. I hate what God hates. So we're not here to entertain and to make you feel good. We're here to make you feel uncomfortable. Right? I'm here to do what Christ said. Set a man against a man, a house against a house, a mother against a father, a sister against a brother. We're here to make you feel uncomfortable. We're going to turn the heat up. And through the spirit, you can see Israelites begin to teach in this earth and turn the heat up on our people. You need to get up from the dust, get up from the grave, get up from the filth, get up from the confusion, get up from the lies, right? Get up from everything that this world pushes to keep you in that low condition. Remember who you are, Israel. Remember you are the children of God. Remember that you are the rulers of this earth. That's your true position. Right? You got to come out from the religions of this world, from the Christianities and the, the Islams. You got to come out from it. Right? We are serving dead works of men's hands for so long. Enough is enough. So let us go through it. The nations need Israelites in sin. Every nation, that is. Every nation has the children of Israel in captivity, every last one of them. Right? Great nations, small nations, they all have us in captivity and the, 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 they will continue right, to reign over us as long as we continue to break the laws of our God. The nations figured something out a long time ago. They know that the only way they can triumph over us is if we become wicked, is if we go against our God, is if we sin is if we break the commandments, they understand it. If it's not for that, none of them can touch us, right? No harm can come to us. They know it. But many of our brothers and sisters, you don't know it. You don't know why you're in the case that you're in. You don't know why you're the off score amongst the nations. You don't know why you've been sold into captivity. Why you are the bottom. Why you are the talk of, on everyone's lips. Right? So we're going to touch on it today so we can recover ourselves from our errors. Let's get in the book of Baruch, Michael, chapter 4. Baruch is Jeremiah's scribe. Right? The book of Baruch is found within the apocryphal scriptures. 14 books, right? That was taken out of the original canon, the 1611 version. Right? It is, it is scripture. There is no error in the apocrypha. Contrary to what the so-called world scholars will tell you. Because they want to keep our people simple. These are the books that we teach from and use. It's the Bible. We don't go into any other record away from the Bible. We stay in the Bible. Because anything else is killing our people. So Baruch chapter 4, and let's go down to verse 6. The nations need Israelites in sin. Right, Micah? Let's read. You. Ye go on. Ye were sold to the nations. You see what God says? We, the Israelites, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Naphtali, Gad, whether you're down in Mexico, down in Peru, down in um, Portugal, down in, in um, the remotest parts of China, right now, Palestine is catching hell. And there are many of the children of Israel within those areas that the world don't talk about. Right? They've been treated like crap over the ages. And in every nation, the children of Israel are. Right? There is a seed of Jacob in Palestine to this day. In those areas. But they're not the ones being talked about on, on the media. Right? They're not talked about. There is Israelites down in the Israeli state. In Demona. Right? And they're not the talked about ones. So we got to teach to show our people who you are within the Bible, how we got in this state, 
What can we do to recover ourselves? What tactics are, are our enemies using against us? How are they prevailing over us? We were sold to the nations, read. Not for your destruction. Not for your destruction. When we come into captivity, it was because of God's mercy. Why? Because God could have just wiped us off. If he wanted, he could have finished with us and start all over again. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 7 says, God did not set his love upon us because we were great in number than anybody else, but because we were the fewest. Right? The Mosai loves to take something that is low and make it great. So that at the end of it, everyone would understand that to him belong the power, the dominion and the glory. So we were sold into captivity, not for our destruction, as many of you think. Many of our brothers and sisters in this earth think that we've been given over to just die perpetually. The Lord send us in captivity so we can bethink ourselves, we can correct ourselves, see from whence we've fallen, right? Allow these nations to be over us, to whip us, so that we can come back to our senses. Read, Micah. But because ye moved God to wrath. Read. Ye were delivered unto the enemy. See that we move God to wrath. We cause our God to be angry with us. Our forefathers were wicked. They went off. We were given a beautiful law and commandment to keep. Right? But we never kept it. We wanted to be like the nations. We desired to eat what the swine was eating. What the dog was eating, it's vomit. We desired to live in the dust. Right? We crave their women. We crave their gods of wood and stone. Therefore, the Lord was angry with us and sent us into captivity and delivered us over to the hand of our enemies. That is why we're in every nation, the off score of every nation. That is why their boot is on our neck. Right? Thus saith the Most High. Read. For you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils. We sacrifice our children unto demons. We give ourselves over to devils. Our body family is the temple of the living power. The Most High Spirit is meant to live in us through his word, right? Through his son, by us keeping the law. We were a holy people. We are a holy people, a, a separated people from the nations. We are not Gentile or what they would tell us in the church growing up, Gentile dogs. We are not Gentile dogs. We are God's chosen people. We become Gentiles because why? We behave like the Gentiles. We started to eat and drink the filth of the nations. We give in to their, their ideologies and their gods. Right? So we sacrifice our children to devils. Read. And not to God. And not to the Most High. Read. Ye have forget ye have forgotten the everlasting God mm -hmm. that brought you up. Come on. And ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. See that? We've grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. But my people start to remember you are the children of Jerusalem the children of Zion, the holy people of the almighty God, right? It is you in the Caribbean, you are the children of Israel. Come alive, get back into the scriptures, begin to examine, examine your case. Why do you think you're, we love the churches? Romans 10 and verse one says, I bear them a record, right? Let me see if I find this quickly, right? All praises be to the most high. Read this, um, son. Brethren. Brethren, my heart desires and prayer to God for Israel. Come Is on. that so that they might be saved? That we might be saved. That's the prayer we are praying that our people might be saved. Saved out of the hand of our enemies. Right? Saved from these captive lands. Watch this. Read. For I bear them that record. I bear them record. For I bear them record mm -hmm. that they have a zeal of God. We have a zeal of God. That is why you see us in all the religions, chiefly in the churches. Our people are the multitude in the churches. 
Why? Because we have a zeal of God. There is something in us that is yearning for the Father. But it says, but what? But? But not according to knowledge. But the zeal of God we have is not according to knowledge. Right? We don't have the knowledge of the scriptures no more. The knowledge of what our God requires. Because we put down the Bible family. Look in the churches. There are many that teach um, sermons, go to church, and the Bible isn't even opened up once. From the moment you go in, you stand up and you sing your way back out. When the preacher comes up to preach, all he does is he quotes hymns. There is no scripture. There is no edification. There is no law being taught. There is no giving sense to the scriptures. What our people are getting is emotion. You're getting entertainment. You're getting music. You're getting being on the floor rolling. Right? You're getting women out of turn. You're getting effeminate men. They have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge of God. Read. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. We, our people are ignorant without knowledge of God's righteousness. Right? God's righteousness is his law. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Luke chapter 1 and verse 6. The righteousness is the law. Keeping the law, that is righteousness. That is good. That is proper. Right? So our people are ignorant of God's law, God's righteousness. Read. And going about to be established. Mm -hmm. Their own righteousness. So because they're ignorant of the righteousness of God, God's law, what's written in the law, they go about to establish their own righteousness. So they will tell you, you can do what you want. The laws are nailed to the tree. You can worship on a Sunday. You can eat unclean food. It's fine. You can, you can fight your neighbor. You can bear malice and strife and envy. And all you got to do, it says, Jesus have mercy. Jesus not going to have mercy. To have mercy, you got to go back to his law. When he told the woman caught in adultery, John chapter 8, go and sin no more, he was telling her to go and don't break the law that says thou shalt not commit adultery anymore. That's what sin is, 1 John 3 and 4. Sin is the breaking of God's law. So if you are stealing and you're caught stealing and you are told go and steal no more, go and sin no more, it is go and keep the law that says thou shalt not steal. Don't rob your neighbor. Don't rob your brother. Don't murder your brother. Don't covet your brother's house. Right? If you see your neighbor's ass going astray, recover him. If your neighbor is absent, keep him to yourself until your neighbor comes searching for him. Those are the laws of God. How we deal with each other. Right? But the nations know that we've abandoned our God. Therefore, they feel, you know what, we can kill them. We can do what they do because they are deserving of anything we give them. We're in our right because they've gone from the protection of their power. So they've gone about to establish their own righteousness. Read, have not. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We've not submitted ourselves unto the righteousness of God. That is why you see all of our people in those religions. There is a zeal. There is something within them telling them that, listen, the Most High and His Son is real. But instead of coming back to the Bible, they run to philosophy. They run to confusion. They heap to themselves teachers of an itching ears. They don't want the righteousness of the law. They've been taught to hate the law when it's the very thing that's going to save you. Right? That's what the scripture is saying. So these nations know they want us in sin. Because why? It, it says here, we've forgotten the everlasting God that brought, up, up, brought you up and have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. Right? Our mother that caused us to come to life. That's what the Lord is saying. Watch this from there. Let's get Joshua. Right? The book of Joshua. Are we going chapter 7? 
Micah, and then we go down. Read for me, please, in verse uh, verse 13. Uh, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Start from verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Right? We can't stand before our enemies, meaning no might in our hands to fight. We can't be victorious over our enemies because of sins. Because we're bowed down in sin. Watch this, read. But turn. But turned their backs before their enemies. Come on. Because they were accursed. They were accursed. Right? We're going to see it in a minute. They took off the accursed thing. Watch this, read. Neither will I be with you anymore. Come on. Except ye, ye destroy that accursed from among you. So we are the people that have to destroy the accursed thing from among us. What is the accursed thing that is in you? What is the accursed thing that is in our people? The religions of the world is an accursed thing. Christianity is an accursed thing. Islam is an accursed thing. Right? Your pork eating, your delicacies, your shrimp and your crabs. Disobedient to your parents, ungodly, immorality. Your club lifestyle, your parties, your banquetings, your bacchanals. Right? Your hatred of the Bible. Your evolution, your ungodliness, those are the accursed thing among us. These are the things that is in opposition and is an affront to our God. We've got to get rid of the accursed thing so our God can recover us. Right? Because when we went astray from him, guess what? He went astray from us. We walk contrary, he walk contrary. Read up. Up, sanctify the people. Come on. And say, mm -hmm. sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Come on. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. There is an accursed thing in the midst of Israel. And the nations, they put, listen, they put these things in place to make us accept the accursed thing as normal. They normalize sins. Notice that. What do you think the society that they love to push multiculturalism? Multiculture. They love it when all nations come together to mingle in one part. No. Multiculturalism is against the God of the Bible. Because a Chinese man living amongst the Israelites, you are going to bring your filthy Chinese gods. You're going to bring your Chinese philosophies and you're going to mingle that amongst the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, you are going to eat of their folly. The Ishmaelites, the Arabs are going to bring his Arabian gods. The Edomites, the European, the so-called white man on the earth, he's going to bring his devils. Right? Multiculturalism is the death of the Israelites. Being mingled amongst them. Right? We need to get out from the, the nation's traps. They bring everybody together, come across the border, come live amongst us. Why? Because they want to destroy the children of God. Right? Right now they have coming up their Christmas. Right? You're going to have soon your Chinese New Year. You're going to have your Indian celebrations. And our people are hopping from one thing to the next. Where is your culture? Where is your God? It is found within the book of life, the Bible that you've been taught to go against, the Bible that they've, they've taught you to hate, to disrespect. The answer is in the book. Right? Thus say it the most high. Get rid of that spirit of multiculturalism because you're learning the philosophies of the nations. It is making you put up with the nation's fill. Right? You delight to live amongst them now because you are no more in, agree in, a, in, a, in agreement and accepting of, their, of their, their cultures. Don't you see their push to have this tolerant society? You have to tolerate everybody coming in with their foolishness. You have to tolerate his viewpoint. No, you can say, when you're a boy, you're a girl. When you're a girl, you're a boy. What? We've got to throw that foolishness down. Remember who you are. Remember the laws God gave you. 
Watch this, read. Thou. Thou canst not stand before the en thine enemies mm -hmm. until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. Among you. So we got to throw away those idols. Throw it down. Put down the Christmas and the Easter. Throw down the foolish religions of the world. Throw down their different celebrations. Throw down the things they put down for us to stumble over. It's a sin to us. The nations are unclean. We're not meant to be an unclean people. We're meant to be clean, separated. We've been severed. We belong to the Almighty. Right? He, he chose us. He separate us from amongst them. Why do we want to mingle? Right? Why do you want to marry the nations? Why are you giving your children over to marry the nations? Right? Then your daughter go marry that Chinese man and all of a sudden he's got a, a Buddha statue praying to. You marry Edom and he's got a Ouija board conjuring demons up in the house. You're mingling, you're, you're, you're mingling that holy seed. You're corrupting the holy seed. The nations want us in sin. They must have us in sin. It's the only way that they can rule over us, Israel. Read, in the morning. In the morning, therefore ye shall be brought according to your tribes. Mm -hmm. And it... So go on, and, and it shall... And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the fam families. Therefore, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. Come on. And the household which the Lord shall take take shall come man by man shall come man by man right read and it shall be that seed that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire so if you don't drop your idols if you don't drop the accursed thing that's among you you're gonna be burnt with fire what fire you might ask the the second death fire Nuclear missile, the chariot burning you up. That is the second death. The first death was what? Noah's flood. That flood this earth. The second death is the fire. You're gonna be you're gonna be cast into the lake of fire. You're going to be listen in the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is your doom and your reward. If you don't get up from the the, the traps of these nations, Israel. You're going to die. You're going to lose your spirit. You will be permanently, uh, listen, excluded. Come back to, your, to the Most High. Don't be stiff naked. Right? Many of us, we've brought up learning certain things. We've, we've, we've lived the way of the Gentiles. But know you're hearing truth. Drop the filth. Right? Stop playing games in them churches. Stop bowing down to the, to the dumb rock. Come back to your God. Watch this read. You'll be burned with fire. He. He and all that he had. Come on. Because he had transgressed the covenant of the Lord. Read. And because... He hath wrought folly in Israel. You wrought folly in Israel. Right? You've wrought folly in Israel. And it says, And he brought his household man by man. And Ekan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. So here is a brother in the midst. Right? Wicked as hell. Whilst the Israelites couldn't win in the battle. Why? Because he, he done decide to take up the accursed thing. Right? Watch this. Read. And Joshua. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, mm -hmm. give, I pray thee, glory mm -hmm. to the Lord, God of Israel. Come on. And make confession unto him. Mm -hmm. And tell him now what thou hast done. Come on. Hide it not from me. Hide it not from me. Read. And Achan answered Joshua and said, mm -hmm. indeed, I have sinned against the Lord. God of Israel. Come on. And thus and thus have I done. Read. Right? So 
This is what he did, and I'll read through this. He says, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonianish garment. You see that? A goodly Babylonianish garment. What are we doing taking off the Babyl Babylonians' garments? Right? The Babylonian garments represent, right, the flesh, the sins of Babylon, the wickedness of Babylon, giving our children over to their gods, right? Corrupting ourselves with their idolatry. These are the things we, a garment, your clothes, you cover yourself with. So we are covering ourselves with the garments of Babylon. We're covering ourselves with the leaves of the trees of the nations. Didn't we read in Isaiah 30, woe to them that cover with a covering that is not of me, saith the Most High? We should cover with God's covering, his son, the law, the truth. We don't cover with the science of the so-called white man. His science opposes God. We don't cover with his biological understanding, right? We don't cover with his evolutionary understanding. We don't cover with his religions, right? And it says, and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them. You see that? He coveted them. He never need them. But covetousness leads to death. That is why the law says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Covetousness makes you break the laws of God. Covetousness makes you, make you lust after the, 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 the nation's gods. Lust after their ways. You want to be inclusive. Oh, I like how, I like, uh, I like the culture of the Chinese. What is there to like? They eat all sorts of unclean things. They probably eat you. They worship their gods of wood and stone. They put food down before wood and stone. Right? They do abominable practices. What is there to entice you? What is it that entices you to bow down to that folly? Why covet the gods of the nations? This brother said, I coveted them and took them. Behold, they are hidden the earth in the, mid of, in the midst of my tent. Right? Many of us are hiding things within us. Your tent is your temple. Your tent is your body. God is meant to live in you. Why are you hiding the filth of the nations? Why have you taken on that in your spirit? Right? And the silver under it. Right? Read. So Joshua sent messengers, mm -hmm. and they ran unto the tent. Come on. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And the silver under it, right? And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Because what's coming next? Death for him. The Lord killed him. Right? They stoned him. He had to die. You see that all Israel stoned him with stones and burnt him with fire. That is a righteous recompense for a wicked action. Understand, family, this will be our result, the resultive punishment if you don't change, if you don't drop the idols of the nations. Watch this from there. Let me get the book of Judith. Right? Back again into the Apocrypha. Right? The nations need the Israelites to sin. They need us to break the laws of God because that, that is what gives them the upper edge. Right? That is what gives them the upper edge. Now, in the book of Judith, and you can read this in your time, right? If you haven't got the standalone copy, right? You can go and Google type in the Apocrypha, right? And you can go to the book of Judith and get a better grasp, right? Contextually, that is. But just for time's sake, I'm going to go down, right, just to get the, the, the essence of what it is we're trying to bring out through the spirit pertaining to this topic, right? Now, read for me, please. Read, start from verse 19, son. Let's go. But, Hold but, on. let me see some. All right, start from verse 19. So this is a guy that was called Holiphorus that was sent on the king's command 
to destroy our people. Right? So watch this. Read. But now. But now. Are they returned to their God? No. The, the, this man. This wicked man. Realized that we've returned to our God. We have returned to our God. Watch this. Read. And uh, come up from the places where they were scattered uh -huh. and have possessed Jerusalem. Come on. Where the sentry is and are seated in the hill country. For it was desolate. It was desolate. Empty of the Israelites at the time. Read now therefore. Now therefore, my Lord and governor. So he's talking to the king. Hall of Forest giving back a report. Therefore, my Lord and governor. Read. If there be any error against this people. Because the king was saying, yo, go kill them. This man is telling the king, if there be any error against this people, and read. And they sin against their God. Read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. There you go. If there is any error in this people and they sin against their God, that will be their ruin. This Gentile knew it. Th that is why they study the Israelites in these captivities. Every nation study who God's people are. They know what makes us tick. They know what brings on the anger of our God against us. And it's when we break those laws. It's when we convert to their filthy lifestyles. It's when we participate willfully and freely in their crap. Right? That is what it's about, family. So if they sin against their God, it will be to their ruin. That is the time we can go against them. Watch us read. And, and let us go up mm -hmm. and we shall overcome them. We will overcome them if they're in sin. We can trample them. We can deal with them harshly because they've broken the laws of their God. Can you see, family, that the laws of God is your, is your shield? That's your defense to Christ. So when they teach you that the laws of God is nailed to a tree, that it is no more, they're actually preaching death to you. Hear me carefully. When you're learning the churches that you don't have to keep God's law, that's death. That is why so much freakisms, you find it in the, in the, in the modern day churches. There is no law in there. Right? There is nothing for you to, to gauge, to look at and say, listen, this is the benchmark. All you have in there is emotional men and, and, and masculine women. Nobody's picking up a Bible to check it. Watch us read, but. But if there be no iniquity. But in, if there be no iniquity, no sin, read. In their nation. If they're clean, if they're keeping these commandments, read. Let my Lord now pass by. Come on. Let the Lord defend them. They know that God will defend us. Hallelujah. These nations know that our God will defend us. As long as we're clean. That is why the gospel must be preached, must be taught to the four corners of the earth. Why? Because the Israelites are in the four corners of the nations. And when you begin to learn the truth, come back to your God by keeping his commandments and having the faith of his son, the Most High will show up for you. The chariots are going to come. The Messiah says in Revelation 1 and 7, Behold, I come with clouds. I come with the chariots. If you keep God's commandment, get yourself together, he's going to crack the sky. And the nations are going to cry. Because why? They have no more hold over us. We're keeping law. We're holy. Right? They have no more, no more loophole. We've closed the breaches. That's what they dread. That is why they use their media, their movies to entice you. You watch their Hollywood films and you see them um, perpetuate children, be wicked as hell, going against their parents, no order, using their films and their media to entice you to chase after money, the love of money that is, right? To chase after their lifestyle, to seek fame, 
They use their media to normalize sodomy. They use their media to normalize witchcraft, sorcery. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Harry Potter. Right? Teaching our children spells in their nursery rhymes. Teach our children to trust in, the in, in, in what's there, the sun, moon, and stars as their God. To wish upon stars. Teach their children about Santa Claus and their fairy tale that there's a man sitting in the moon. Right? But when we, be when we become back to the laws of our God, there is no more throne for them. Their weapons cannot touch us. Their evil plots cannot touch us. Right? Their counsels cannot touch us. The Lord is our shield. Watch this. And their God. And their God be for them. Their God. They know that our God will be for us. Read. And we become a reproach before all the world. Notice this says, and we will become a reproach unto all the world. You see that? They know they're going to become a reproach, a shame. The Lord is going to revisit. The Lord is going to turn the calamity upon the head of the nations. Right? Woe well, to us who love the nations. We want to be like them. You want to participate. You love your captives. You love your enemies. Right? Let's go into the book of Numbers, Micah. Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter 23. Right? Numbers chapter 23. And let's read verse 21. The nations need the Israelites in sin. Right? Read that for me. Numbers 23 and verse 21. Read. He. He that he hath not be, be, he beheld. beheld iniquity in Jacob. Because Balaam was hired by Balak to go curse Israel. He's a sorcerer, and he was hired to go curse the children of Israel. He couldn't do it. These nations want us to be cursed, like you see that are cursed thing in the book of Joshua. They want us to partake in the accursed thing, so we can get a punishment from our God and have them rule over us. So it is, Balaam is saying, after he was hired and he couldn't carry it out, he couldn't curse. As a matter of fact, start from verse 20. Behold. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. Come on. And I have and blessed. He, and he. And he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Balaam says, I can't reverse it. The Almighty has refrained me from cursing. How can you curse a holy people? Right? You can't curse that which is right. You can only curse the crooked. So when we depart from the path, we receive the sentence of those lifestyle that we took up. We took off the curse. Watch this, read. He hath? He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. The Lord has not behold sin in his people. Right? We, at this point, we're keeping the commandments. Watch this, read. Neither have he seen perverseness. Perverseness. Perverseness in Israel. There is no evil in the Israelites. We were clean people following the law. Right? Walking in the spirit of the Messiah. Therefore, we were fine with our God. He was our defense and our shield. Right? It says the Lord his God is with him and the shout of a king is among them. You can't come against us when we're good, when we're on point with our God, when we're keeping these holy days, when we're loving our neighbor as ourselves, when we're not corrupting ourselves with the idols of the Gentiles, when we're not sacrificing our children to idols. So it is we must recover ourselves in this present captivity. Don't give your children over to the abortion centers. Don't give them over to the immoral lifestyles of the world. Right? Don't let them seek after fame and fortune. Many of you have children with a gift of singing and you give them over to this world's corporation to go showcase what they have to the devil so the devil can use them, manipulate them, and abuse them. God is getting no glory from it because the things that they're singing is to glorify the flesh. They're not singing to recover their people from the error, right? 
their, their, their gift that the Lord has put inside of them is only causing the nations to get rich and causing you to be in sin. Right? Look at the sports complex in the earth that they've set up. Our people are chief in the sports arenas, in athletics, in the basketballs, in the footballs. You're squandering what's good in you. You're flirting with the nations. Right? You're giving yourself over to the devil. All those arenas were set up to destroy the children of Israel in ancient Greece. In the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. Right? That is where it's coming from. You sporting yourself, having your daughter, right? Exposing her body, running, track and field. It's, a, it's a morality. That, that's the lifestyle of the Greeks. They love to be naked. They, they love nakedness. They love to show themselves. And today you have a movement on the earth, hashtag um, power, woman power. Right? My milkshake bring the boys to the yard. That is a spirit in this world. Right? There is no honor. There is no code. There is no morality. Right? Read verse 22. God brought them out of Egypt. Come on. He has... He, as it were. As it were the strength of a unicorn. A unicorn, right? And the unicorn is not what Hollywood tell you. This fairy tale flying. That's nonsense. That's Christianity. It's like a rhinoceros with a... Uni means one, single. Right? Watch it, surely. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no enchantment, no witchcraft. No sorcery can trouble the children of Israel if you're in righteousness, if you keep the law. When you abandon the law, you're destroyed. They can triumph over you. When your vessel is unclean, demons inhabit your vessel. You're oppressed by devils, harassed. But when you're clean, only the spirit of the Father dwell in you. And no harm can touch you. No powers can destroy you. Right? So surely, no enchantment can work against Jacob, read. Neither is there any divination. Neither is there any divination to divine to consult the dead, right? Demonic powers, mediums, necromancing. These are the things the nations use, right? To ensnare your soul. Use prim primarily their media. Those Hollywood films, those soap operas you watch is corrupting your brain, it's sorcery, right? The religious movement set up in the earth it's sorcery it's to bewitch you to beguile you being simple because they know you've abandoned the law therefore you'll believe a lie <clears throat> there's no divination against israel according read according to According to this time, it shall be said, said of Jacob mm -hmm. and of Israel. Come on. What have God wrought? What have God wrought? Right? Let's get the book of Psalm. Right? Let's get the book of Psalm, chapter 125, and let's read verse 1. Right? I pray you're following. I pray that you're giving heed to the word Israel. Right? Read. They. That's... Uh, Come on, read. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. You shall be as Mount Zion, read. Which cannot be removed. Come on. But abide it forever. So when you trust in God by putting on his son, keeping his commandments, we won't be moved forever. And there's a prophecy of Israel coming back together. We, we Right now we're coming back. When we all stand up on our feet as a great army, keeping the law, there will be no more going out into captivity. There will be no more destruction to the Israelites. Watch this. As, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, mm -hmm. so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, henceforth even forever. Come on, for the rod. For the rod of the wicked shall mm -hmm. not rest. Upon the lot of the righteousness. It shall not rest. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Light and dark have no what? Fellowship. 
It has no agreement, family. Right? Watch this. Read. Lest, Lest the righteous put, put forth it. their hands unto iniquity. That's the only way the rod of the wicked will rest upon the lot of the righteous. Right? The only way the rod, the Lord uses these nations as a rod to plague us. The Assyrian Empire in Isaiah 10 was a rod, or 11 was a rod to the Israelites to whip us. The European powers, Edom, Rome, the so-called white nations, those are rod. Ishmael is a rod, the Arabs. The Chinese man is a rod. Right? Ammon, Moab, Ammonite, those are rods against the children of Israel, a rod to our back. They can't touch us except we're in sin. That is why they do what they do. And we have, listen, we get so much whip. It's because we are in sin. Wake up from the Sunday worship and all of that and see how fast they, they have to drop that. It says, lest, unless the righteous, we are the righteous, unless we put forth our hands unto iniquity, unto sins. That's the only way they can touch us. They have no power over us otherwise. Right? They can't triumph. It doesn't matter what plot they have. It will never happen. And no enchantment can work against Jacob if we are righteous. Do good. Read. Do good, O oh Lord, unto those that be good, mm. and to them that are upright in their hearts. Upright in their hearts. Read. As for such as turn aside mm -hmm. unto their crooked ways. Come on. Okay, crooked ways, read. The, the Lord. Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. That's it, is it, is, that is it, Israel. As for them that turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead you, shall lead them with the workers of iniquity. You want to be wicked? God says, okay, I'm going to give you over to the wicked. You want to be in the multicultural lifestyle? Okay, go be that and watch your doom. Many of you are buying the lies and the illusion that you're born this way. The freakish lifestyle and mindset that they give you, oh, it, you're born that way. It's a lie. You weren't born a freak. You weren't born with that, with that, that folly. Right? It is not so. God made you upright. That's what the Bible says. He made man upright. But you've sought out many inventions. You want to be something else other than, one, other than what God created you to be. You've sought out many inventions. That's what these nations do. And then they will tell you through their lying signs, you were born this way. You weren't born this way. Right? When you give yourself over to gluttony, to greed, and you, you now waste a thousand pounds, they will tell you it's because you've got a fat gene. It's because you're greedy. It's because you're in the spirit of gluttony. Right? Now in the earth, in different parts of the earth, they're looking to legalize what? A grown man can be with a child. And they'll tell you it's normal. You were born this way. You weren't. They want you to accept sin, accept death. You've got to fight against the folly of the nations. But the only way you can fight is using God's word. If you don't pick up the Bible, find teachers that you can listen to and learn, you're going to believe a lie that you might be destroyed. Right? You're going to believe a lie. Don't fall for their inclusive spirit. It is fine to be excluded. It is fine to be segregated, separated. Don't follow a multitude to do evil. Proverbs 1 and 10, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Don't partake in their filth, Israel. Right? So God is going to give you over to the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Right? Let's get a book of Nehemiah. Micah. Nehemiah chapter 10. And let's read, right, verse 31. Read that for me. And if. And if the people of the land mm -hmm. bring where or, or any victuals. Victuals is food. If the people of the land bring any wares or victuals, read. 
On the Sabbath day to sell. On the Sabbath day to sell. Read. That we would not buy You eggs. see, these nations, family, come closer. Read with me. The Sabbath day, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Also, the holy days are high Sabbaths. Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. These are the days you should be celebrating, not Easter, not Christmas. Those are idolatry. Those are of the world. Leviticus 23 give you the holy days. The weekly Sabbath which we must keep. We shouldn't worship on a Sunday. Now, these nations know that we can get you to be in problem with your God if we entice you to break the Sabbath. So what does this world do? They increase your pay on, on a Friday. On, on weekend and a Saturday, you get double time, overtime, whatever the case is. You get more money. And many of you, even if you know it's a Sabbath, we're enticed to want to do it. Why? Because there's more money. Right? There's more money. Can you see the plot of the enemy? Why it is all their clubs are open up on their weekends? Could it be they're trying to get you out to break the Sabbath so you can shake your whatever your mommy gave you on, 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 in them clubs? They, wanna, they want you to give yourself over willingly to immorality. So they put all the so-called enjoyments on the weekend. They entice you to break the law. They say, come, come enjoy yourself. What you doing home? It's boring. It's the weekend. We've worked so hard. Let's go enjoy ourselves. Let's live while we're young. Let's party the, our, our stress away. Oh, you're boring. You're no fun. That's the enemy. That's the voice of the devil. If you've got friends that's enticing you to, to break the laws of God, that is the devil. You must keep the Sabbath. Those are God's holy days. Those are the days that sanctified for you to keep. It's never ever been changed. All Rome did was give you the names of their gods. Monday become what? I mean, the first day of the week, day one become Monday, the moon's day. The second day become what? Tuesday, T-I-U, the God too. Wednesday is Woden. Thursday is Thor's day. You see him in the Hollywood films, in the Avengers, Odin and Thor. Friday, the God free. Saturday, Saturn. And they do the same to the months of the year. Month one down to 12. And they confuse your mind and tell you that December is the, ten, is the 12th month when really Desi in Spanish and Latin is what? It's 10. They've lied to you, family. You've been tricked. Right? They've sold you a damning bread. But now that you're hearing, what will you do? Will you continue to go in the spirit of the Gentiles? So if they bring any victual or, or, or wares, goods, on the Sabbath day to sell, we will not buy it. We're not going to buy it from you because the law says there is no buying and selling on the Sabbath. That's Exodus 20. We shut business down. We only going to work for God. We going to eat from his table. Don't come here and sell to us. And these nations, they set up shop in our, in our communities to entice us. The Chinese man come, comes in and set up his many shops to entice you. Right? The ice cream man with his filthy ice cream chalk, with his, with his bell to, to entice your children. Mommy, mommy, I want ice cream. Don't break the laws of God. Don't let the nations let us break God's law. Right? Of them, we will not bite of them on the Sabbath. On the seventh day. On the holy days. See? Or on the holy day, which is Sabbath. And that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. We're not going to be corrupt like the Gentiles that perpetually have you in what? In debt. Right? To make you stress yourself out. To make you jump off a bridge. Watch this. Chapter 13. Micah, read this to me. Chapter 13 and verse 15. Right? Read. In those in days. In those days. 
saw so, so I in Judah some treading wine. Mm -hmm. Some pr treading wine presses. Some treading wine presses on the Sabbath. We can't and, work on the Sabbath, right? And bringing in sheaves. And bringing in sheaves, read. And laying asses. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as also, also wine, grapes, and fish. Such and fish. goods, merchandise, right? Read. And all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem. It says which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Watch this, read. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victual. Wherein they sold victual is on the Sabbath day. Read. There dwelt men of Tyre also. There dwelt men of Tyre. These are Gentile nations. Right, read. There in which brought fish. Don't sell your, your fish on the Sabbath. Don't set up no market stall amongst our people. Shut it down. You see, when, when Israel come back in order, this whole world will fall into order. You will either lay down, right? Or you're going to follow the laws of God. Lay down me, you're going to be put to death. We will not tolerate no filthy Gentile doing ungodly thing in the land. And that is in the entire earth, that is. The whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God. So don't think the Israelites are going to come back, but the Chinese man is still going to be down in China doing his ungodly deeds. Hell no. He's going to be faced with the sword or the law. Pick it. You're going to follow God or you're going to die. Just like they tell us in this captivity. If you don't be a part of us, we're going to kill you. Right? So they brought fish to sell to entice you. Why do you think they, they make it so easy for you to, to, to partake in merchandising today. By the click of a button, you can get your, your, your Uber Eats and your deliver rules and all of that. Right? On the Sabbath, you're in, you're hungry. Let, let me just order something up. Order something up where? Right? We're not going to break the law. We're going to be vigilant. We're, we're not supposed to be ignorant of the devil's devices, the tricks and the tactics the nation uses to entice us to sin. Watch this, read. And all manner of where. And, and whatever food stuff you have away from fish, take it away from us. We don't want it. Keep your delicacies, right? Don't come up here on the Sabbath or on the holidays. Come and, and entice us. Read. And sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah. Unto the children of Judah, read. And in Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem. Don't then, bring it here. Then... Then I consented with the nobles of Judah. You see, Nehemiah was a fierce man of the Most High, a righteous Israelite, a brother that knew the consequence of our people going off, breaking the Sabbath. Because remember, our people broke the law, right? And in 721, the house of Israel went off into captivity under the Assyrians. Right? Then Judah played the whore. And Judah, the Lord, sent Nebuchadnezzar to bring them down to Babylon. 70 years in desolation. So Nehemiah understood through the spirit that unless we keep this law, we're going to be perpetually destroyed. So he contented with the nobles of Judah, right? The chief men of Judah who should make sure to be certain that, listen, we need to tell these devils, these Gentiles, don't do this. Tell the nations we know what you're doing. I wish we had leaders, right? Religious leaders, right? Leaders in our community that would stand for our people. But instead of standing, they're part of selling us out because they are in the pockets of, of, the, of the nations. They're getting their kickbacks. They're getting a cut from destroying their own people. So the pastors are down with the devil. They're rocking you to sleep in the churches. They're telling you to roll your sleeve up, right? Take the shot of the devil, right? They're telling you to give into, their, into what the, the government is selling you, making you go to sleep. So we need to contend with the, with the leaders that is set up in our communities, the leaders that they show you on their TVs, right? Those men that they put before you in your music, in, your, in the music, in the films, telling you all the single ladies, all the single ladies, 
Huh? When you're singing about single lady, but you're married, it's to corrupt your sisters. Telling you, you don't need a man, you don't need a husband, but yet they're married. They've got everything going for them, but you must go play the whore. They want you to jump from one man to the next, one Romeo to the next. God forbid. Let's not have it anymore. Watch this, read. And said. And said unto them. Come on. What evil thing is this? What that, wicked thing is this? Read. That ye do Come and on. profane the Sabbath day. And profane the Sabbath day. Read. Did not your fathers, your fathers thus. Come and on. did And did not our God bring all this mm -hmm. evil upon us. Come on. And upon this city. Read. Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel. By, by profaning, profaning the Sabbath. By profaning the Sabbath. Our forefathers did it and we catch hell. So why are these leaders enticing us to sin further? Read, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. That's when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath. Come on. I commanded that the gates should be shut. The wise brother said, shut these gates. We're not going to have the heathen up in here. We're not gonna we're not gonna have them selling to our people on the Sabbath. Shut the gates, read and charge. And charge that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. Give the Lord his due, read and some. And some of my servants said set I at the gate. We're gonna set warriors at the gate, men of valor, men who know the the necessity of keeping the law. We're going to set them at the gate. Read that. That there should be no, that there should no burden be brought in on the Politics. Sabbath day. Come on. So? So the merchants and sellers of all kind of wall Of where? Mm -hmm. Of where logged, lodged. Lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. See that? So the, it says the, the sellers of all kind of where? lodged outside Jerusalem once or twice. These nations don't want to give up. So they say, okay, they lock the gate. All right, tell you what, we're going to set up and, um, you know, we get ready to go. That's how these nations think. Right? Let's make some, what you call them, neon signs. Let's lit this up. You understand? To entice them. Let's put on a sail. You get two booze for the price of one. You get half off. We're going we're gonna to do that on the Sabbath. It's all in an effort to kill us. And our people, we love a deal, right? Nothing is wrong with a deal. But when it comes to the Lord's business, we forget that. Then I testified. Read. Then I testified against them. Come on. And said unto them. Read. Why lodged? Ye about to the wall. Pick up your tent. Why are you sleeping here? Why are you pitch your tent? Right? Pick up your garbage and go. It's full time for us to tell the Chinese man, listen, leave this area. Watch this, read. If, if ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. If you come here again, if you pitch tent here, if you try to entice my people to sin, I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to cut you down. I'm going to kill you. Because you're causing us to be killed. Right? We're going to deal with you harshly. Read. From that time. From that time forth came. They no more on the Sabbath. And they got the picture. They got the message. So they stopped setting up tin. They stopped trying to entice. Stop trying to allure. That is a spirit we have to be in, brothers and sisters. To overcome the traps that have been set among us. Right? Let us be in that spirit. Let's get the book of Jeremiah, right? The book of Jeremiah. Let's get chapter 50 and let's go down to verse 7, right? Read. All that found. All that. Hold on, hold on. Right, let's read from there. All. All, all that found them have devoured them. The all that found them is the nations. Found meaning we're what? We're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is whom the Messiah was sent to redeem. His people. His blood was shed for Israel. Right? So all the nations that found us have what? Have devoured us. 
They've consumed us. They've made merchandise of us. They've lied to us. They've corrupted us. Watch this, read. And, and their adversaries said. The devil said. Adversary is the enemy. The devil in the flesh. Edom said. Rome said. The Ishmaelites said. The Arabs said. The Israelis said. Watch the. What did they say? Read. Offend not. We offend not. Read that again. Uh, we offend not. We there is no problem. There is no error in us. We killing them is no problem. We being racially critical of them is no problem. Right? All the things we put in place to demoralize them and treat them like filth is no problem. Why? Because because they have sinned against the Lord. They've broken their God's law. What does that have to do with us? There's no problem with us doing what we do. We can kill as many of them as we want. We can treat them like the filth they are. Because they understand that we've sinned against our God. It wasn't us. All we did was show them the cookie. They took the cookie out of our hands. That's how the nation's reason, family. You see... They present themselves or presented themselves as though they were our friends. But we read in the book of Lamentations that all our friends have forsaken us. All our lovers have turned to enemy. They were really our enemies. They were disguised as friends. Many of you trust your oppressors. You trust in lying oppression. You bought the charms of the enemy. Didn't Antiochus Epiphanes Gained the kingdom by flattery. Then he killed. That is how these nations get down. All these governments are your enemies. All these governments are your enemies. They hate you. All these churches that come out of the whore, come out of Rome, they hate you. None of them is for return. So they said they have sinned. Read. The habitation of the justice, even the Lord. They've sinned against their habitation, which is God. Yahweh. Right? The hope of their fathers. The hope of their fathers. Right? Remove. Let, it's okay, sir. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 40. Right? Jeremiah chapter 40. And let's read verse 1. They know it, family. Read the word. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Mm -hmm. After that, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the captain of the God, had let him go from Ramah. Come on. When he had taken him, being bound in chains, mm -hmm. among all that were carried away captive of the Jerusalem, of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. of Jerusalem and Judah. Come on. Which were carried away captive unto Babylon. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the captain? captain of the God took Jeremiah and said unto him, Come on. Pronounce this. Uh -uh. The Lord. The Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have pronounced this evil upon this place. No, notice this guy, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, a Babylonian, told Jeremiah. What did he tell him? The Lord thy God has pronounced this evil upon this place. He said, the reason your people are going off down in my land, in Babylon, is because your God has pronounced evil. Even the Babylonian knew he couldn't take Israel, Jacob down, Judah down, unless they had sinned. This is what these nations know. They couldn't have us in captivity unless we sin. This is the reason you're going off in captivity, family. It's the reason we've been scattered. It's the reason we suffer. It's not a mystery, family. It's written right in the scripture. Just pick it up and read it. Right? Let's go Jeremiah chapter 2. Right? And we just need... Let's read verse um, verse 3. Watch this. Read. Israel. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. We was holiness. We was the separated people. Right? Read. And the first fruits of his increase. Come on. All, the, all that devour him shall offend so when israel was holiness to our god when we never had lovers when we never dealt with the gentiles and their foolish behaviors if they had come at us to of to devour they would offend they understand it right evil 
would come upon them, saith the Lord. The nations know it, family. That is why they do everything they do to entice us into sin, to draw us out. Right? And I'm telling you about their media, the mouth of that beast, you have to be careful. They use their media over time to entice, to catch our, the generations of our people, especially the generations of today that just want to get rich fast. You want to cut corners. You don't, you, don't, you don't deal with morality and integrity in these generations. You're in the quick movement, the quick lifestyle to gain the world. Hey, may the Lord help us. May the Most High help us, right? Let's get the book of Zechariah, right? The book of Zechariah chapter 11, and let's get verse 5. Micah, read. Who's processing? Hold on, let me see something. Uh, start from 14. Thus saith the Lord, my Thus God. Thus saith the Lord, my God. Come on. Feed the flock of the slaughter. That's Israel, feed. We need, we need to be fed with what? With the word of God. We need leaders and teachers over us to feed us, to not tickle our ears and our emotion, but give us the truth so it would might stir up a change, a lasting change, a return back to the commandments. Who's what? Read. Whose possessors slay them? Those who own us, those who bought us, they kill us. They slay us. Right? Read. And hold themselves not guilty. They don't have no remorse, brothers and sisters. You look at the so-called royal powers of the earth, they don't have no remorse. You hear them say that when I die, I want to come back as a, as a deadly virus. You think it's to kill their own people? Uh-uh, it's to kill you. Why do you think that they look to the continent of Africa and so forth, and they will tell you there are too many of you? They want to dwindle your numbers. They want to kill you. Look at the Georgia Guidestone, a certain number beyond. They want to kill the children of Israel. That's their motive. What do you think your climate change agenda, agenda is about? It's the reduction of your numbers. They don't hold themselves guilty. When they come together in their councils and their think tanks, they come up with, with methods and ways to kill. Right? That is what they do, and they're not guilty about it. They call so-called leaders of our community and tell them what to do. Tell them what to teach you. The schools your children go to, they make sure that certain books are in the school to corrupt them. So by the time they reach a certain age, they are deviants, they are devils, little monsters. They have no remorse. They don't hold themselves guilty. Watch this, read. And they. And they that sell them say. Watch this. Blessed be the Lord, uh, for I am rich. Hey, I'm good. I've got money. I've got power. Right? Blessed be the Lord. Uh, in a mocking way, mind you. Look at when they sold us. Right? Look when they sold us in times past. They, that's the best they've ever been when we were so down. They loved it when they see the so-called brown and black man and the children of Israel on them auction blocks. Look at the banking institutions of the world. It was all set up off the back of the children of Israel. Certain hospitals were built on the back of the children of Israel. Certain libraries that was given by slave masters is off the back of the children of Israel. The whole financial institutions is set up off of us. The railways was built based on us. <laughs> it says, and their own shepherds pity them not. We got some wicked leaders over Israel, I'm telling you. Men who don't care about their own people, but their own belly, their own pocket, their own influence. Woe be unto them. Right, Zechariah chapter 1, right, and read from Micah and verse 15. Right? The, this is the thought of the ungodly, the thought of the wicked. Right? Read from me, please. And I am. And I am very so displeased with the heathen. Come on. Lots are at ease. These heathen, they're not catching no hell. They're, they're in good case. 
Read for I. For I was for I was but a little displeased. Come on. And the, and they helped forward the affliction. They helped forward the affliction of the children of Israel. They love it. They love to put the boot up in us. They love to slap the chains on. They plot and say, how many, uh, listen, we're going we're gonna to build more prisons. We're going to increase the prison population. We need the Israelites in these prisons so they can work and die. We're going to set up judges with, with our legislator to give them harsh sentences, to make them go off. We're going to set up movie stars, films to entice them to sell drugs so they can kill their own people. Right? We're going to put drugs in their community, alcohols, whatever it is to kill them. And then when they partake of it, who don't die, we're going to lock them up. That's how they think. They help forward the affliction. Right? That's what they do. Let's get the book of um, Micah chapter 4. Right? Micah chapter 4. And let's get Micah verse 11. Right? Micah chapter 4 verse 11. Look at this. Read. Now also many nations are gathered against thee. The United Nations of the earth. It is not for, you, for your benefit, family. Many of you champion the governments of these world. United Nations, the Arab League, your G8 and your G10 and your G12. Many of you love it. You love the UN peacekeeping force. They're not keeping no peace. When they say peace is war, it's blood, it's death. They're killing our people secretly down in the Congo. They're fighting wars, you know not what. Killing you, raping your land of your natural resource, plundering. These United Nations have gathered against the Israel. Watch this, read, that say. That say, let her be defiled. Let Israel be defiled. Let her be like the pig in the mud that we are. Right? Let her be destitute. Let her children be impoverished. That's how they think. Right? Let them be in famine. Let her be defiled, read. And let our eye look on Zion. And let our eye look at them. And so, wherever we are in the earth, they observe us. Look at them. <laughs> they laugh. Look at them, the children of Zion. Look at them. Look how low they are. Look how this try. You know how they sit and laugh at us when they see us calling our women outside of um, certain terms? The B words. You know how good they, they feel when they see our women disrespecting men? When they see women on top? Women want to be leaders? You know, how, you know how good they feel when they see our children loving the wages of this world? When they see our pastors selling out? When they see us sitting in their school rooms, learning their philosophies, their evolution, their lies, they laugh, family. They're happy. They drink. They cheers each other. Cheers. We've done ourselves good. That's how they deal. They high five each other. Well done. One president ring up the next president. Well done. These, are, these things are written in the scriptures pertaining to their secret councils. What's next on the agenda? How much further can we go? Which other, which other nation amongst them can we conquer? We, we, which other leader is not in our books, is not in our pocket? That's how they think, family. They, I look upon Zion. They look upon the children of Israel. That means what? They know that we are the children of Israel. They know that the poor of the earth are the children of Israel. The, dis the, dis the disfranchised are the children of Israel. They know it. They know why we've come down to this level. But Micah says they know not the thoughts of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is going to laugh at them in Psalm 2. He's going to eventually destroy them. Right? Let me get the book of Nehemiah. Right? Nehemiah. Right? The book of Nehemiah. Um, chapter 2, and let's get <clears throat> verse 10, and then one more precept and we, we pray out, right? Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 10. Read, when Sanballat, come on. When Sanballat, when San, San the foreign, foreign knight, knight, 
and Tobiah the servant. Mm -hmm. The Ammonites heard of it. Heard of it. Heard of what? Heard that our city was being built back up. The walls were being built back up. We're seeking a defense again. We're keeping the commandments. We're keeping the law. When they heard that Israel begin to come back in themselves to their God, watch this, read. It, it No, no, no. It what? It grieved them. It grieved them. Ah, that thing is painful for the nations. When they see the Israelites on TV and the corners teaching the law in righteousness, when they telling, when they see us telling our communities to stop being a whore, right? To stop eating unclean food, it grieved them to leave Sunday worship, Christianity, the different religion. They are hurt. It grieves them. It grieves them, family. It cuts them to the core. They don't like it. They can't stand it. It grieved them exceedingly. Read that there. That there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of, of Israel. Israel. They never liked the fact that Nehemiah was about his people, was looking to recover his people. So it is they don't like the fact that Yahawashai, the Messiah, is come in this earth to seek the welfare of his people. That's why Rome killed him. That is why they continue to kill the image of Christ in the earth and give you an effeminate white man, right? A girly white man as the Christ. A devil, mind you. Cesare Bajaya. That is why they do their best to destroy the image of the Israelites in the earth. The sons and daughters of the living God, the natives of America, the natives of the earth, those are the children of Israel. They destroy us. They look to kill the image of God. Because they can't have it that the Messiah would come to seek the welfare of his people. That is why they would have you in strong delusion pertaining to the coming of the Messiah again. They don't want you to hope. They don't want you to set your heart on God. They want you to believe in oppression, that you will never get out of this. They want you to fall asleep, right? Stuck in the matrix, only serving them. They want you to believe that the, the illusion of their caste system, you will be in that position forever. Be the scum of the earth, the broken people, the, 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 the Dalits, right? You're, you're, you're bound, duty bound to clean up their filth. That is their mind, family. Right? That is their mind. Let me get the book of Baruch, where we're going to leave you, chapter 4. We're going to jump down to verse 31. Right? The book of Baruch. All praises be to the Most High. Baruch, chapter 4. And let's get the um, verse 31, Micah. Right? Read. Miserable. Miserable are they that afflicted thee. They that afflicted us is the nations, these Gentiles. Read. And we just at thy fall. Miserable will they be that rejoice at our fall. Like I said, when we fell, they were happy. They said, raise it, raise it to the ground, even to the foundations of its Psalm 137. Kill them, pluck up their heritage, confuse them. Let's, let's come together that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Watch this, read. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is America. Miserable is uh, Britain. Miserable is China and Russia. Canada. The Caribbean islands. It's not your home. Zion is your home. Jerusalem is the home, the beautiful garden. The land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is your home. You're in captivity. You're in spiritual Egypt. You're bound in iron and fetters. You're chained up to the flesh. You're sold to illusions. You're sold to the gods of the nations. You've been given over to unclean things. Miserable are thy children would serve in their cities. Miserable is she that received thy sons. These nations that receive us, God says they are miserable. Well, They'll get the misery, don't worry. There is a righteous recompense with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble us. Watch it read. For as she rejoiced as 
uh, at their ruin. Destroy them, kill them. They rejoice that they were ruined. Read. And was glad of thy fall. Come on. So shall she be grieved for her own desolation. There is a desolation coming for Edom, the so-called white nation, the European powers. You think they're going to be on top forever? You think their cities built up with their towers and their skyscrapers are going to be intact once the Messiah split the sky? Everything that they've built is going to be shaken. So the things that weren't built by them remain. All their banking system is going to fall. Everywhere they have our gold, if they're going to lose it, it's for us. We're coming for it through the spirit and power of the Most High in, in Yahweh Shai. We're coming for it. We're going to take it back. The Bible said the wicked took it by force. We are going to take the kingdom by force. We're not going to beg them. We're not going to go down our knees and tell them, give us back pretty please. Right? Through Christ raising us up with the sword of execution, we will take authority in the earth through the Messiah. Right? That is how it's going to go down. And these nations, they're going to throw away their idols or they will die with their filthy idols. They will not serve devils no more. They will not give their children over to Moloch. They will not deal with unclean foods no more. They're going to serve the God of the Bible. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Watch what God says. Read, for I. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. Come on. And her pride shall be turned into mourning. These nations are going to mourn. Blessed are they that, they that mourn now. For you're not going to mourn later. But your tormentors, they laugh now. Ha, ha, ha. They're going to They're going to mourn later. They're going to weep bitterly. When their kings are shackled. Their necks in chains. Many of you might think it's a racist statement. It's written in the Psalms. This honor have all the saints to bind their kings with chains and their fetters with their their their, their princes with with no with fetters of iron. It's in the law family. There is going to be a recompense to the wicked. Right? Your Christianity have made you weak, Israelite. It's made you emotional. You don't even know what judgment is. Right? You want to just live in peace with your enemy. You've forgotten the God of justice. Right? You've forgotten righteous recompense. And you just want to be in your kumbaya spirit. Well, I pray your spirit wake up. Right? Serve your God. Come back to your God. Watch this. For fire. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. Fire. Nuclear fire. Missiles, boom. The chariots are also going to rain fire upon the heathen, upon the nations. Fire is coming. That which was promised from the days of Noah to destroy. The wheat, which are the children of the kingdom, Jacob, the Israelites, will be placed in the barns, which are the chariots. We're going to be caught up in the chariots. The wicked will be placed where? In the fire. You are the chaff. The wicked is the chaff. The wicked is the children of the kingdom. Watch this. Read. Long. Long to endure. Come on. And she shall be in, inhabited of, of, devils. of devils for a great time. And that goes into Revelation, the 18th chapter with Babylon. Right? So, family, in our clothing, in our closing, the nations need the Israelites in sin. Right? I pray that the things that we've gone into have pricked you, made you uncomfortable, right? Made you uncomfortable. The sins that we're doing, sin is what? Breaking the law. You know, go into the law and look. All the things we've discussed and highlighted, those are sins and we need to stop sinning, stop breaking the law. Keep the commandments and live. Come out of the spirit of the nation, the spirit of the Gentiles. Right? Don't, be de don't delight yourself to be like them because it is for our doom and for their ruling over us forever. Right? With that, we give all praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Mashiach, Malak, Yahweh, Shai, our God and our King. Right? We pray that you continue to be steadfast in the truth. Right? Continue to pray, to study, to apply yourself to the Word family. Right? And we, uh, we always ask you to pray for us that utterance will be given unto us. Right, so that we can go preach this gospel to the four corners of the world. Then shall the end of this age come.
then shall the end of Rome's kingdom come. Right? We ask you to follow us online, subscribe, share, Sword of Zion. Right? Share the, the teachings with your family, your friends. Meditate on the teachings on the word of the Most High. Follow us on Fire of Zion. Subscribe and share. Right? And just help us with the ministry. Right? Until next time, I'm Brother Jeremiah. Shalom. Devil thought he had me, then I screamed, screamed. Devil thought he had me, then I screamed, screamed. Yeah, yeah. Ay, ay. Ain't no weapons formed against me, gonna prosper. Ain't no Plenty of angels round me, packing like some mob stuff.